Hey y'all, it's Tasha with Pine Knot Family Farm. We're back in the kitchen today. Um, today we're gonna make a raisin pie. Now, I don't like raisin pie, but it's Levi's absolute favorite. I learned the recipe from his mom. Um, it's super easy to put together. I made my pie crust a little bit ago, and then you just put the lattice on top. You can buy the pre-made pie crust from the store. You can buy the ones that roll out. Um, however you choose to do it, I usually make mine from scratch. We may do a video on that later, um, but right now I went ahead and had that made ahead of time. So I'm going to show y'all how I make the raisin pie for Levi, and he's the only one in our family that eats it and loves it, and that's what he requested. Okay, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start with two cups of water, but you're going to reserve a fourth of a cup for later on. So just pour one and three-fourths a cup in now. Save that for later. And then two cups of raisins. I usually just put kind of whatever looks good. I don't exactly measure this out. They all want to stick in this container. So one and three fourths a cup of water and about two cups of raisins. You're gonna turn this on about medium and you're gonna let these come to a boil and they're gonna boil for five minutes. I'll give y'all an up close look when they start boiling. You just kind of break the clumps of raisins up, get them all down covered in the water. We're just gonna let that boil. Okay, my raisins are starting to come to a boil and I'm just kind of stirring them lightly. That way none of them stick to the bottom of the pan or start to get burnt. I'm gonna go ahead and give you all the recipe in case you wanna write it down. It'll also be in the description below. Two cups of raisins, two cups of water, a half a cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth a teaspoon of salt. And then at the end, you will need one tablespoon of white vinegar and one tablespoon of butter. Um, of course, you'll need a pie crust of your choice. And if you wanna put the lattice style crisscross, you'll need another pie crust to go on top of that. And preheat your oven to 350 degrees. As your raisins are finishing boiling, you're going to want to take your remaining fourth a cup of water. And you're going to add your cornstarch. Which is two tablespoons. You're going to add your half a cup of brown sugar. Your one teaspoon of cinnamon. I usually do just a little bit extra. I believe I really like cinnamon. and an eighth a teaspoon or just a pinch of salt. You wanna take a spoon and just mix this all together just to get it incorporated. You're gonna take that mixture and you're just gonna pour it into the boiling raisins. Give it a good stir. And you're gonna let this come to a boil and boil for just maybe three or four minutes. Now, once you get the brown sugar mixture in there, you're gonna want to definitely stir it constantly because it will burn and stick to the bottom. So keep it moving. And it's definitely, as you can see, going to be thick. Almost like a molasses. 
Okay, after just a couple minutes, you know, two or three minutes, you're gonna pull it off the heat. You're gonna throw your tablespoon of butter. And a tablespoon of vinegar, just white distilled vinegar. Incorporate all that in. You'll have to kind of let the butter give it a second to melt. Okay, I have got my pie crust out of the refrigerator. I went ahead and just poked some holes with a fork down in the bottom for ventilation. Now you're just gonna take this mixture, pour it into the bottom of the pie pan. raisins out. My extra dough here in a ball that I'm going to cut for the lattice on top. Now this does not have to be perfect or pretty. I normally my pies are not anything to look at because I do not take the time to make them pretty. A little bit of flour I'm going to throw out here. Like I said, you can use the ones that come over by the biscuits in the refrigerated section. You can, I'm gonna split that in half. You can use those, roll out your lattice on top, or you really just don't even have to have it if it's your, your preference for sure. And I don't measure these or make them precise or any of that stuff like that by all means if you want to go for it. I guess if I was selling them in a bakery I probably would. And my pie crust is, it's a thicker pie crust. I just use a pizza cutter. You can kind of see my, my pie crust is, like I said, quite a bit thicker. And you just cut strips. I've got four strips going one way here. flour so it don't stick. take these other strips and you're just going to go over you're going to pick one up and go under and lay it on top that one kind of broke but like I said we're not trying to be perfect and it's going to go over pick one up and go under and then you'll start at the opposite the next time around because you've done the one on top so you'll pick this whole strip up you'll go under over, pick this whole strip up, under, and then that will just lay flat over. Then this one will be on top, underneath, on top, underneath. So there you go. It's not perfect. OK, 
Okay, y'all, it's been about 30 minutes and I'm gonna take the raisin pie out of the oven. That 30 minutes probably went by really fast for y'all, huh? If you like raisins, give this pie a try. Uh, like I said, I'm not a raisin eater. I will pick the crust off and stuff, but I will leave the directions in the link below. And I just, I absolutely love to bake desserts and stuff. I love old recipes, um, vintage cookbooks. I could just look at cookbooks all day long. So before we get off here, I was actually gonna show y'all some of my cookbook collections real quick. Elf that Austin built for me. All right, so some of the cookbooks I've got, Fanny Farmer, this American Woman's Cookbook, it has fallen apart almost, but I found it at a flea market. I just love old vintage things like that. Um, I try to get a cookbook at most places that we travel and visit. Instead of getting a souvenir or a t-shirt, I usually lean towards a cookbook. We've got the flavors of Belize. Um, the boy's grandmother is actually from Belize in Central America, so I may have to cook y'all something out of that one of these days. I cook a few dishes. We got some Taste of Home, Pyrex. This is one I found at a flea market. I absolutely love Pyrex. I'll show y'all my Pyrex collection in a minute. Um, Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede, Amish cooking. I actually love the Amish things, so my kid case put this in here one day and I found it and he said oh I know you would be looking through these cookbooks so I put this here for you to find so I've just left it there kind of one of those special things got lots of the southern living almost well all of these actually have come from flea markets and then down here we've got I'm missing a couple of dates. See, I'm missing 83 and 92. And then it goes to 2003. These are just, like I said, ones I found at a flea market again. I love flea marketing, if you can't tell. These just really old cookbooks. Um, this is a really old one. This is actually my Nanny's, my mom's mom's cookbook. It's got a lot of her handwritten stuff inside of it. I absolutely treasure this. Then inside here, we've got some of the really older Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, Betty Crocker cookbook. Here's some of the canning books. Like the Kerr canning book, the blue ball. These are some of the older ones. Of course, I found these at flea markets as well. And I love new cookbooks as well. Got the Hershey's and Taste of Home. And here's some more of the older canning cookbooks. And here's an old Hershey's cookbook, 1934. Of course, like I said again, flea markets. Up here, I've got my binder. It's not organized yet. I've got my binder with my recipes in it. And this is just a bunch of recipes of my nannies that I haven't went through yet. Here's some of my Pyrex collection. It's actually a Pyrex baby bottle I found at a flea market. I love Pyrex. All right, y'all. So that lets y'all know just a little bit more about me that I love cookbooks and Pyrex. So I enjoyed showing y'all a little bit of my collection and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a comment, leave it below. If you make this raisin pie, leave me a comment. Let me know that you made it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. So that way, you know, whenever we post a new video or we go live. Y'all have a great day and God bless.